Hey meal preppers, welcome back to Sweet Peas and Saffron. I'm Denise and I share easy meal prep recipes to give you your time back during the week. Today we are talking about soups, which are one of my favorite meals to meal prep. They are super freezer friendly and often with soup, the flavor actually gets better as it sits in the fridge. So it's a great option to meal prep. Today I'm going to share four of my favorite recipes, but before we get into the recipes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I freeze my soups. So I actually like freezing my soup in one quart jars. I have heard that it's better to find the wide mouth jars rather than these jars with shoulders. Um, but I have been freezing in the jars with shoulders for, I don't know, a good year now and I've never had a single one break. So what I do is I will only fill it to about this high. I leave about a quarter of the jar for expansion. I only put them in the freezer once the soup has completely cooled down and I leave the lids ajar until the soup has frozen solid and then I've tightened the lids. If you are looking for another great alternative that's reusable but does involve plastic, these reusable plastic freezer jars are also a great option. I've had these for years and they still work great. Now, when it comes to freezer cooking, you want to make sure that you label your food. And I have these really cool reusable labels so you can label them. The labels stay on the containers, through the dishwasher, through the freeze thaw process. So these labels come with a special eraser and when you are ready to reuse the container, you just take the eraser that came with the labels and rub off the writing and write something new. So they're a great way to keep track of what you are freezing. So another way to freeze soup, and I learned this from my friend Steph at Meal Plan Addict, who is like the freezer meal queen. Um, she freezes her soup in one pint jars and that way it's like a single serve portion. So when Steph is ready to serve, she thaws her mason jar and dumps it into a bowl and heats it up in the microwave. And that way you don't have to thaw the whole batch of soup, you just thaw one portion at a time. So that's pretty much it about freezing and storing soup. I'm going to tell you all about my favorite soup recipes now. So the first soup I'm going to share with you is pretty much my favorite soup on the blog. It is a creamy Thai sweet potato soup and it is so good. It's like a little bit sweet and it's got like the savory, sour, spicy flavors from curry and it just works really well together. So in a pot, we're going to saute some onions in a little bit of olive oil, and we're just going to cook them until they are soft. Next, we're going to add some garlic and ginger, and we're gonna cook them for about a minute until you can smell them. And we're gonna add in some red curry paste. So once you've added the red curry paste, just mix everything up. We just wanna heat the curry paste through and really like stir it in so that it gets combined with all the ingredients, because if you add it in, with the rest of the ingredients, you'll just have a big glob of curry paste and it's harder to mix in. So once your red curry paste is kind of like mixed up with the other ingredients, then we're going to add in our sweet potatoes, carrots, stock, lime juice, fish sauce, and red lentils. Stir it all up, cover, and cook for about 20 minutes until your sweet potatoes and carrots are completely soft. We're gonna use an immersion blender and puree the ingredients until they are completely smooth. And then we're gonna stir in a can of coconut milk. So that's pretty much it for this Thai curry sweet potato soup. It's great served with an extra squeeze of a little bit of lime juice and works great for dunking bread. Our next soup is a broccoli cheese soup. Now my broccoli cheese soup is lightened up a little bit. I find that some broccoli cheese soup out there is really heavy. It's full of cream and just like a lot of cheese. So mine's a little bit lighter. And instead of using a whole bunch of cream to thicken it, instead I use potatoes, which sounds weird, but totally does the trick. So to make my healthier broccoli cheese soup, we are going to saute an onion in a little bit of olive oil until soft. We're going to add in some garlic and cook for one minute. And then we're going to add in celery, broccoli, potato chunks, salt and pepper, and broth. We're going to stir it all up and cover and simmer for about 20 minutes until everything is completely soft. 
We're going to add some milk and puree until smooth. Then we're going to stir in the cheese and I like to do this in different batches so that it doesn't all clump together. So just add it in gradually and then you're going to end up with perfectly smooth and creamy broccoli cheese soup. Our third soup, and it's another pureed soup because I'm obsessed with pureed soup. This time we're making creamy roasted cauliflower soup. Taking the time to roast your cauliflower and your garlic for the soup adds so much flavor. If you guys have never tried roasting garlic, you've got to get on this, it's so good. So to get our soup going, we're first going to roast up our cauliflower. So we're going to toss the cauliflower in some olive oil and arrange on a roasting pan. We're also going to roast a whole head of garlic. So we just slice off the top quarter inch of a head of garlic and then we kind of nestle it in some foil and drizzle with olive oil. And then you wrap the sides of the foil up and around the garlic. So we're going to roast the cauliflower and garlic together in the oven, but the cauliflower will come out of the oven before the garlic. The cauliflower takes around 25 minutes, whereas the garlic will take 45 minutes. While our cauliflower and garlic are roasting, we're going to start on the soup. So in a pot, we're going to saute some onions and a little bit of olive oil until they are soft. To add in carrot, celery, thyme, stock, and salt. So we're just going to let that simmer. And when our cauliflower comes out of the oven, we're going to pop it into the soup to simmer and soften along with the rest of the ingredients. When the roasted garlic is ready, we're going to let it cool slightly until it's safe to handle. And then you just kind of squeeze it out of the skins and pop it right into the soup. We're going to use an immersion blender to puree until smooth. And then we'll stir in some milk and a little extra pepper and salt if it needs it. And that's it for our creamy roasted cauliflower soup. We're on to our fourth and final soup and it's not a pureed soup, which is shocking, I know. It is a healthier beef and barley soup. So in a large pot, we are going to melt some butter and then we're going to add some stewing beef and season it with salt and pepper. We're going to cook until the beef is no longer pink and then we're going to stir in some Worcestershire. Next, we're going to add some onion, carrot, and celery. We're also adding some garlic. Salt and pepper and thyme leaves. One bay leaf, beef stock, or you could make bone broth, and I'm going to link you to my homemade bone broth up here. We're going to add in some barley, Stir it all up, cover, and cook for a good hour. You want the beef to be tender and the barley to be cooked through. And that's it for our healthier beef and barley soup. So that's it for our four cozy soup recipes for fall. I hope you guys got some good inspiration heading into these colder winter months. And I wanna know what your go-to soup recipe is when the weather starts to cool down. Mine is with how to doubt the sweet potato soup at the start of this video. If you guys loved this video, I know you're gonna love the next video where I am showing you how to cook up four tasty Instant Pot recipes and they work great for meal prep. So check that out over here. How do you say Worcestershire? Worcestershire. 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 <laughs>